Well, it's a great honor to be here today with Dr. Tony Chueri from the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. I consider him to be a real legend in the field of renal cell carcinoma, so it's great to get his perspectives on the disease. Uh, so, Tony, just to begin, you'll actually be discussing some data related to PD-1 on Monday. Can you shed some light on that? Uh, tell us what you'll be discussing that day. Yeah, we, we do have some exciting uh, data regarding nivolumab, which is a PD-1 inhibitor in metastatic renal cell carcinoma. Uh, we have conducted a biomarker-based studies where we collected tissue at baseline just before nivolumab with a biopsy and while on nivolumab, trying to figure out potentially any mechanism, uh, any biomarkers of response or resistance to nivolumab. And on the other hand, uh, try to reproduce as much as possible previous experience with nivolumab in the same setting. And we did find overall survival, which will be presented for the first time, uh, to be um, uh, quite interesting, uh, exceeding uh, two years in some cohort, uh, as well as we found some interesting biomarker data related to T-cell uh, infiltrates uh, in the tumor that correlate with uh, better uh, uh, outcome. There was no signals of toxicity, anything new that we did not uh, know before uh, regarding uh, PD-1 inhibition or uh, uh, nivolumab. So uh, this is, you know, exciting. It provides some framework to base our uh, next study, next biomarker study um, related to mechanism of uh, resistance to nivolumab or in case we would want to add uh, another drug. Um, uh, to nivolumab in metastatic renal cell cancer. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be really exciting data, and it really lends itself to one of the struggles that I have from day to day in the clinic. Every patient discussion entails some talk of PD-1, but we don't know who to pick. Right now, are any of these markers that you've discussed, PD-L1 expression, T-cell expression, are they ready for prime time, or do we need further study? They're not, but we are getting very close. And the thing I want to you know, uh, mention here is that uh, data in one disease setting may be different from another disease setting. Uh, I think there's a lot of variability in uh, calling uh, what is positive by PDL1 uh, immunohistochemistry, which what we use currently. The cutoff remains unknown uh, at this point. Folks are looking at 1%, 5%, 10%. There are different antibodies in the field and uh, which are used by different companies and different academic uh, centers. And there is always the problem in renal cell as well as other tumors of uh, tumor heterogeneity. You can uh, look at the same tumor in the same site and some areas will be PDL1 positive, others will be PDL1 negative. We just uh, reported on uh, very recently on a study with from our institution with Dr. Signoretti and colleague that uh, tumors uh, tend to have tumors with higher firmin grade around the area of highest firmin grade. That's where PDL1 uh, expression tend to be the highest. We did not find major difference between primary and metastatic site, but I think you know, the story continues to evolve. What we found interesting in the study that even the patient that we call PDL1 negative still have relatively uh, very good outcome. So at this time, I do not think you can choose a biomarker in metastatic RCC to guide your therapy with an immune checkpoint blocker. At this time, things may change next year, at next year ASCO perhaps. That's very well said. I, I appreciate that. And I'm going to ask you a very provocative question right now, but something that I think emerges in many of our discussions, probably in yours as well, uh, at, at City of Hope. So if you've got a patient who says to you, look, doc, I know the data is still pending. We don't know the results of the phase three study yet, but I'd like to get nivolumab right now off-label. Is that something that you support, or what are your perspectives on that? Well, I'm, I'm blessed to work at an institution where always I have not always, but a lot of times availability for clinical trials. Uh, I do think uh, the data, the trial, the um, pivotal trial of uh, nivolumab in second line, uh, you know, finished accrual and hopefully the result will be uh, available uh, soon. Uh, it's not unreasonable to recommend, but you know, in our 
uh, current system, uh, there's a lot of unknown, like who is going to pay, what's going to happen, is this an optimal uh, patient, what kind of kidney cancer do they have, is there a clear cell or non-clear cell? All these trials were done in clear cells, so what if you have in front of you a patient with non-clear cell, and actually what type of therapy they had? If someone comes de novo, want a PD-1 inhibitor today, I mean, th there is really very little data. So what I want to mention is the field may change like in matter of weeks with what's happening with um, uh, emerging results from trials that we're awaiting for. Uh, what I can tell you, it seems that the drug is well tolerated overall and uh, it helped a subset of our patients, there is no doubt. Great. Well, Tony, as always, I learned a lot from chatting with you and, and thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you, Monty.